Um, many people come to the IDB interested in, in looking at information that will help them design vaccines. That happens to be my background. I, I, I came out of a lab design, de designing and developing vaccines. And so the things that I always keep in mind when I'm looking into this, especially when I'm doing a meta-analysis, and obviously, aside from a summarizing the totality of the data on a particular, for a particular disease that's in the database, I also, we're also interested in identifying and reporting in the paper epitopes that are correlated with protection or correlate, correlated with in vitro correlates of protection. So if those of you who are familiar with those terms, in vitro correlates of protection, neutralizing activity, CTL activity, gamma interferon production, and also in vivo challenge assays which demonstrate protection. And most, in most cases, this is in an animal model of disease. Nevertheless, it does demonstrate protection, especially when the, the uh, epitope is used as the immunogen and it, the immune re response elicited by administering that epitope protects the animal from challenge, live challenge with the organism of interest, okay? So that's the challenge assays I'm talking about. And also treatment assays, for example, some of the treatment assays I showed you for uh, allergic disease or autoimmune disease. And then, as Barn was talking about, the idea of coverage, covering the population, in this many cases, the human population that you're interested in. And you're gonna hear a lot about how to get at that tomorrow, how to get at that through prediction, um, but um, also the way to do it, get at that from the standpoint of the data that's already captured in the database that is validated epitopes is to use the immunum browser um, as a starting point for looking at regions that have been heavily studied and shown to be uh, highly reactive.